सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन टू नेवर मिस एनी अपडेट फ्रॉम राउज आई ए स्टडी सर्कल ज्वाइन द ओनली ऑफिशियल टेलीग्राम चैनल ऑफ राउज आई ए स्टडी सर्कल टू गेट द रेलिवेंट मटीरियल्स एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट अपडेट्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डेली न्यूज सिंप्लीफाइड द वॉट वाई एंड हाउ ऑफ द न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस फ्रॉम द सिविल सर्विस एग्जामिनेशन परस्पेक्टिव टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द हिंदू डेली एडिशन डेटेड नाइन्थ सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू The topics which are to be discussed have been displayed on your screen and the time stamping of the same has been provided in the description box below. So now let us begin with our first topic. This topic is in relation to the Human Development Index which regularly appears in the Human Development Report which gets published by the United Nations Development Program that is UNDP. This topic has appeared at page number 1 and its continuation at page number 12. The topic reads India ranks 132 in the HDI which is Human Development Index and this is the very context of this news item also however an important thing is that the ranking of India has reduced compared to the previous ranking and that is why it becomes important now this report particularly is important from the prelims as well as mains perspective why because it has certain factual informations in it for example the ranking of india or related to the various parameters or indicators which are used to calculate this hdi or it can also be relevant from your mains perspective because this can be utilized by you in your essays in your answers in gs 1 2 3 as well as 4 so that is why from the mains perspective this topic does not fall in any particular section but this is a topic from the current affairs which you can utilize in all the papers depending on the questions asked so that is why today we are not going to discuss only the hdi but we are going to discuss this human development report 2021 to 2022 which is published by undp in this particular report one index is related to the human development index however there are several other indexes also so that is why we will go through all those important indexes which are relevant from our examinations perspective so first of all this is the front page of the report why this is important because this mentions the title or the basic theme of this report which is uncertain times unsettled lives shaping our future in a transforming world now this theme is very important because it is reflecting to a problematic situation which the world is going through that is why it is saying the uncertain times and the unsettled lives and this problematic situation all of us know has been the result of the covid pandemic because of this covid pandemic the times have been uncertain the lives have been unsettled and despite this in this transforming world this report comes up with certain suggestions which aim to shape our future in a sustainable way so now let us begin or dwell into this particular part this report says that because of certain factors there is a growing uncertainty in this world for example first is this society is getting transformed in the post pandemic times we have seen the food insecurity issues the lack of hospitalization infrastructure across the countries inequality in terms of vaccine distribution among all the countries so that is why there is a societal transformation which is going through the second important thing is that this society is also undergoing intensified polarization today because of inequality because of spreading of fake news propaganda etc a huge polarization is taking place across the world the conflict between various political parties between various societies in names of religion race caste etc is growing and that is why this polarization has further worsened the situation the third important issue is we all know that is the anthropocene era the planetary changes in terms of pollution climate temperature land use changes deforestation etc which all are somehow related to the growing anthropogenic influence that is human induced activities and the fourth is the stagnant one which is present since the times the humans were born that is 
the everyday uncertainty that people have always faced. So because of these four things, an uncertainty complex has been formed. And this report tries to dwell further upon this uncertainty. And because of this growing uncertainty, this report proves the fact that the global human development index that is not restricted to any particular country, the global human development index has declined two years in a row, which obviously has diminished the gains of the preceding five years. As is witnessed by this particular graph, it can be seen that since 1990, there was almost a constant rise coming up to 2019. And it was at this particular time that was hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. And after this particular time, this growth projection, this growth trajectory started to decline. And here an important and interesting fact is that even the global financial crisis could not create an obstacle in the progress of the human development index at the global level. Even after this financial crisis, the HDI index was still increasing. But the COVID-19 pandemic has put a sudden break and there is a sudden drop in the global human development index. And this is not restricted only to the developing or the LDCs. This phenomena is reflected in almost all the countries. Almost all the countries have seen the reversals in the human development in the first year of COVID-19 pandemic. Whether it were the very high HDI countries, this dark blue color reflects the reduced HDI. Similarly, the high human development index countries have also reduced and the low and the medium HDI countries have obviously faced the maximum brunt and they have also reduced. So in this very line, now we will look at certain composite indexes which are published in the Human Development Report by UNDP. The first, as we have seen in the headline, is the Human Development Index, which popularly is also known as HDI. As far as this particular index is concerned, India has been ranked 132 out of 191 countries. Now, from the prelims perspective, there are few things which are important. First, obviously, is the ranking. Second comes the indicators that what are those parameters which are used to calculate any index. So the indicators related to the HDI that is Human Development Index is shown in this particular diagram. There are three broad categories. One is related to health that is long and healthy life which denotes the longevity. And in this there is a sub index which is the life expectancy index which is calculated on the basis of life expectancy at birth. The second is related to the education or knowledge. Here. Again, there is an education index, but in this, there are two sub indicators. First is the expected years of schooling and second is the mean years of schooling. Then the third one is the a decent standard of living, which is measured on the basis of gross national income per capita in terms of purchasing power parity. And on the basis of this, the GNI that is gross national income index is calculated. When all these sectors that is health, education and income are taken into account, we get the human development index. Now this is a chart which shows the India's ranking. As you can see, India has given a serial order 132 and this is the rank of India. We have discussed it here also that India's rank in HDI is 132. Now comes the multidimensional poverty index. Now this index is very important not just from the prince perspective but also from the mains perspective. Why? See, there are two ways to prepare any report. First is that you get the factual information that is obviously the ranking of India as well as the indicators or parameters used by that report. But the second is these reports also show us a path that which things are important to measure any particular phenomena. And this particular report is an example of this. For example, whenever you have to think about poverty, what are those things which comes to your mind? If you have to, let's say, eliminate or eradicate or lessen the poverty in India, 
what steps would you suggest don't you think that the prime factors which comes to our mind in dealing with this poverty scenario is the money that is the income levels that is why this particular report came up with the view that the poverty is not unidimensional that is it is not just related to the money aspect poverty is a multidimensional phenomena and this particular thing is also reflected in the indicators because again it also has three broad classifications that is the health education as well as the standard of living but in these dimensions if you see the sub indicators we will come to understand that poverty is a multi dimensional phenomena because it also takes nutrition into account child mortality years in schooling school attendance cooking fuel sanitation drinking water electricity housing as well as the assets owned so my point is whenever you have to think or you have to come up with certain steps to reduce the poverty ratio in any region let's say in india then you must think on all these parameters for example let's say you have increased the average income level of a indian household so you will say or you can conclude that i have eliminated the poverty but again let's say there is some health emergency in that particular household so all that raised income will be spent in dealing with that particular issue and that particular family will again go back and get trapped in that poverty cycle similarly if you can provide education to some family or some individual then obviously you need not to provide them a separate income source if they are educated then obviously they can search for their own jobs so the thing is that poverty is a multi dimensional phenomena so whenever you have to write some steps always think poverty as this multi dimensional phenomena next comes the gender development index that is gdi now this gender development index was an improvement over the human development index why because human development index was the indicator of the average developmental level of a population but from this particular index we were not able to understand that what exactly is the inequality levels in the developmental patterns of males as well as females so for that to understand UNDP started the gender development index it is similar to the human development index but in this the focus is on the women that is why the gdi measures the gender inequalities in achievement in the three basic dimensions of human development that is health education as well as the economic competency so in layman language when you measure hdi separately for females it becomes the gdi now next comes the gender inequality index now here again an important thing is there is a difference between gender inequality index and gender development index gender development index as we have discussed is primarily based on the human development index for the females but gender inequality index is a different index and in this particular index the india's rank is 122 the indicators and the dimensions in this particular index that is gii is different from gdi it takes three broad dimensions that is the reproductive health empowerment as well as the labor market again important thing a low gii value indicates low inequality between women and men so this information is very important because this can be asked in your prelims also and many a times students get confused that the low gii means high inequality so now let us see the dimensions and indicators which are used to measure gender inequality index as we have discussed there are three dimensions that is health empowerment as well as labor market in health there are further sub indicators that is maternal mortality ratio mmr adolescent birth rate and on the basis of this we get the female reproductive health index then comes the empowerment in this we have female and male population with at least secondary education in this we also have the 
political empowerment that is the female and male shares of parliamentary seats and under the labor market we see the female and male labor force participation rates on the basis of empowerment and labor market participation we calculate female empowerment index female labor market index male empowerment index male labor market index then on the basis of these parameters related to men and women we calculate female gender index as well as male gender index then obviously on the basis of this we get gender inequality index again for you people it is not important that how exactly this is calculated what is the mathematical formula the only thing is that you should be aware about the indicators for example in the gender inequality index empowerment is not just in terms of economy it is also in terms of education as well as it is also in terms of political participation so again this fact becomes important so now when you have to write something related to women empowerment or you have to come up with certain steps which should be taken in our country to uplift the conditions of women then obviously you have to think on these broader dimensions indicators etc the next gender related index is the gender social norms index that is gsni again this is also a part of the human development report by undp and it measures how the social beliefs obstruct the gender inequality in areas like politics work education etc for example many a times you might have heard that let's say civil engineering and mechanical engineering or the field postings are not very much suitable for the girls and that is why they should go for the it or computer science okay so exactly this is how the social beliefs obstruct the gender equality in areas like politics work and education again the dimensions in this are political educational economic as well as physical integrity and then there are certain social beliefs on the basis of which certain indicators are made for example men make better political leaders than women do women have same rights as men and on the basis of these two things we calculate political empowerment index similarly in the educational section it is said that university is more important for a man than for a woman on the basis of this we calculate education empowerment index in the economic sense it is said men should have more right to a job than women and men make better business executives than women do on the basis of this we have economic empowerment index and then comes the physical angle and in this we have proxy for intimate partner violence as well as reproductive rights on the basis of these two things we calculate physical integrity index then on the basis of obviously all these four indexes that is political empowerment index educational empowerment index economic empowerment index as well as physical integrity index we come up with gender social norms index then comes the planetary pressures adjusted human development index in this particular index india's ranking is 138 you might have also heard about the inequality adjusted human development index which in short form is also known as ihdi again the idea was that because the normal human development index as we have discussed was not reflecting any discrimination against women it was also not reflecting any inequality among various sections of the population because hdi was the average developmental levels of a population but we understand that it might happen that the overall developmental levels of a population is increasing but there might be huge inequalities among the sections of that particular population so to understand this very thing there was inequality adjusted human development index and now because we have seen that it also might happen that the average developmental levels are rising but still among different sections might be more vulnerable to the anthropogenic activities like climate change let's say the population living in the coastal areas are more vulnerable to the population living in the inlands so for this to understand undp came up with the planetary pressures adjusted human development index this is an experimental index that adjusts the hdi for planetary pressures in the anthropocene what is this anthropocene 
you might have heard about the paleocene so such so scene is basically the geological time period and now because we are living in such a time whereby the human activities are becoming the most dominant ones and all the activities are somehow shaped by the humans themselves so that is why this particular geological era is also known as anthropocene anthro stands for humans so this is the way to calculate the planetary pressures adjusted human development index it takes two things into account that is co2 emissions per capita index and material footprints per capita index then their arithmetic mean is calculated and it is adjusted for the planetary pressures combined with the human development index we get the phdi if the phdi is zero that is planetary pressure adjusted human development index is zero and if it is one then be it means it becomes equal to the hdi and therefore there are low planetary pressures so again the range lies between 0 to 1 more the phdi lower the planetary pressures again there is an inverse relationship so i guess you have understood all the important indexes so now let us revise all these things in brief once again so initially we looked at the report and it had the theme uncertain times uncertain and it had a theme uncertain times unsettled lives shaping our future in a transforming world then we looked that what this report exactly means by the growing uncertainties then here we saw that almost all the countries have faced reduction in their human development index levels even because of the covid-19 pandemic the global hdi has also reduced from this we started to analyze several indicators or several indexes which which form the part of the overall human development report first we looked at the human development index which is based on health education as well as income levels then we saw that how poverty is a multi dimensional phenomena and we looked at the multi dimensional poverty index then we saw the gdi that is gender development index which was the hdi for females then we came to the gender inequality index and here we saw that empowerment is in the economic sense is in the social sense as well as in the political sense here india's rank was 122 then we discussed the gender social norms index which reflected that how certain social beliefs obstruct the women empowerment in the last we looked at the planetary pressures adjusted human development index which takes into account the anthropogenic activities and its outcome in the human developmental levels this report also comes up with certain approach to deal with these challenges and this report calls it a three eyes approach now what exactly is the three eyes approach the three eyes stand for investment insurance and innovation so report says that if you have to make your people more secure you have to focus on investments insurance as well as innovations now investment must be done in terms of enhancing the reach of the public goods nature based human development that is it should be sustainable and also to prepare to face the environmental changes then comes the insurance we all know that insurance is for the social security and in the post pandemic times we have witnessed the rising sincerity towards this social security element so that is by macro prudential policies social protection access to basic services human rights public deliberations as well as the participation of population becomes important and the third thing is the innovation that is adaptive peace building innovation in energy efficiency social innovations addressing the misinformation and enhancing the media literacy as well as data management so again three is approach that is investment insurance as well as innovation holds the key towards a sustainable future now let us begin with our second topic this topic has appeared at page number 12 and the topic reads supreme court wants job policy for transgenders in 3 months 
the context of this very topic is that recently a petition was filed by shanavi panusami who is a transgender in order to fulfill the dream of flying as a cabin crew in the airlines and that is why in the context of the transgender person protection of rights act which was passed by the parliament in 2019 supreme court has given the direction to the government to finalize the policy regarding the employment avenue for the transgenders the core theme of that particular act was that no person or establishment whether private or government now this is important that it applies to private as well as government any establishment should not discriminate against transgenders in matters of employment recruitment promotion or in any other area so in this very regard today we will discuss some of the important provisions of the transgender persons protection of rights act 2019 as far as the scheme of syllabus is concerned this topic finds its relevance in the general studies mains paper 2 in the section of social justice and the micro section because it mentions the welfare schemes or laws for the vulnerable sections by the center as far well as the state governments and we know that transgenders form an important component of the vulnerable sections in our society so in this direction let us begin the discussion first of all what is the definition of a transgender person the act of 2019 deliberates on this thing and it says that a person as one whose gender does not match the gender assigned at the birth is a transgender it includes trans men trans women persons with intersex variations gender queers and persons with socio cultural identities like kinners or hijras as we have discussed that the basic aim of this particular act was to remove the discrimination against the transgenders in our society that is why the act prohibits the discrimination against those people in employment or any other occupational opportunities as well as access to public goods and services for example healthcare etc it specifically says that no government or private entity can discriminate against a transgender person along with this prohibition on the discrimination it also guarantees the transgender persons the right to movement reside rent or occupy any property further it also provides the right of self declaration it provides for the right to declare the self perceived gender identity and cast an obligation on the district magistrate to issue a certificate of identity without requirement for physical examination further it also mandates the government to take important steps in the healthcare ecosystem including separate hiv surveillance centers sex reassignment surgeries etc the act also provide various institutions and official mechanism in order to protect the rights of the transgender persons for example it lays down the establishment of compliance officer it says that every establishment has been mandated to designate a person as a compliant officer to handle the complaints from the transgenders further it also establishes the transgender protection cell it says that every state government will also have to set up a protection cell under the district magistrate what is the basic objective of this transgender protection cell as the name suggests it is for the protection of the transgender people and that is why the director general of police will monitor the offenses against the transgender person further at the national level it establishes the national council for transgender person now this body is very important because in preliminary examination a separate question on the statutory bodies are also asked so in this very regard this is a statutory body it will consist of chairperson and other members the chairperson will be the union minister for social justice the vice chairperson will be the minister of state for social justice further the secretary of the ministry of social justice will also be a member along with these one representative from the ministries including health home affairs and human resource development 
will also be there further the council also consists of five members from the transgender community itself again i am repeating it the chairperson will be the union minister of social justice vice chairperson will be the minister of state for social justice further the secretary of ministry of social justice and representatives from ministry of health home affairs as well as hrd will be its members along with them there will be five more members from the transgender communities themselves in addition to these there will be five experts from non governmental organizations that is the ngos the job of the nct that is national council for transgender person will be to advise the government for the formulation and monitoring of policies and redressing the grievances of transgenders so that means it will be a advisory body so till now we have discussed some of the important features which are there to protect the rights of the transgender in terms of employment education health offenses against them etc now we shall also critically examine the provisions of these laws and shall look that what are the existing challenges or issues first the question is that will the act recognize the transgenders as socially and educationally backward class for the purpose of article 15 and article 16 on the similar grounds there is also a discrimination in the context of sexual abuse against the transgender person because the punishment which is laid down under this particular section is lesser than the punishments for the sexual abuse against women under section 376 of ipc then as we have many times witnessed in buses or in our personal cars or in trains there is no provision for penalizing the organized begging which is very coercive in nature the act further does not grapple with the realization of the civil rights such as marriage civil partnership adoption etc and a very vague bureaucratic procedure is to be followed for legal gender recognition in the last the act is also silent on whether a trans person who holds a male or female gender certificate will have access to the government welfare schemes and programs meant for transgender people because many a times it happens that our social construct is in such a way that many transgender people are not allowed to freely express their specific genders and that is why under compulsion on various certificates they register themselves either as male or as female but again here the practical question arises that if they are having this certificate the legal document which identifies them as male or female but in reality they are transgender so will they be applicable for the government screens programs and support or not so this was all about the transgenders persons protection of rights act 2019 Now this topic has appeared at page number seven. The topic reads: Odisha government cancels the shrimp culture leases inside Bhitar Kanika. Now this topic is mainly relevant from the preliminary examinations perspective, because when you will see the notification and you go by the syllabus of the prelims examination, it mentions general issues on environment, ecology, biodiversity, and climate change. and in this news article a very important wildlife sanctuary and national park is mentioned known as bhitar kanika now bhitar kanika is a wildlife sanctuary as well as national park and if you go by the previous year question paper analysis specifically of the prelims almost every year there are more than two questions which are specifically asked from the wildlife sanctuaries national parks or biosphere reserves for example in upsc 2020 the question was asked in the context of india's desert national park again if you do the analysis of these questions there are certain key features of any wildlife sanctuary national park or biosphere reserve around which any question revolves for example in this particular question it is talking about the aerial spread of that park the concept of the national park and the species located in that national park In UPSC 2019 the question was asked in the context of Agastamala Biosphere Reserve there are four options given and names of various wildlife sanctuaries and tiger reserves are mentioned and you were asked that which of 
the option is correct as far as these locations are within the Agasthamala Biosphere Reserve. Again, it is talking about the aerial spread. Similarly, in UPSC 2019 itself, again, another question was asked related to the natural environment or the climatic conditions that is temperate alpine zone. And you were to find that which of these national parks have this particular condition. So, on this very lines, today we will discuss certain key features related to the Bhitar Kanika Wildlife Sanctuary. As far as the context of today's news article is concerned, it is related to the Odisha government cancelling the leases granted to the aquaculture companies for ship culture in the Bhitar Kanika Wildlife Sanctuary. This context is not very important. Yes, key facts related to this wildlife sanctuary is important. First of all is the location. Now, this is the Bhitar Kanika Wildlife Sanctuary located on the coast of the Odisha, specifically northeastern Odisha. Near this Bhitar Kanika Wildlife Sanctuary, we also have Gahir Matha Wildlife Sanctuary. Now, both these sanctuaries are very important. So, as we have discussed, that Bhitar Kanika is located in the state of Odisha. It is the second largest mangroves ecosystem in India. Now, mangroves are the halophytic vegetation and that is why they require brackish water to grow. Which is the first largest mangrove ecosystem of India? That is the Sundarbans in state of West Bengal. Second is Bhitar Kanika in Odisha. And now because it lies in proximity to the Bay of Bengal and it itself is a coastal area, it makes the soil of this particular area enriched in salts as well as vegetation. As far as the species of this wildlife sanctuary is concerned, the species which are found here are mainly tropical and subtropical in nature. The most important species of this wildlife sanctuary is endangered salt water crocodile. And here as we have discussed, there is Gahir Matha wildlife sanctuary also nearby. The Gahir Matha beach forms the boundary of this sanctuary in the east and this Gahir Matha beach is famous as it holds the largest colony of olive ridley sea turtles. So now two species that is endangered salt water crocodiles as well as olive ridley sea turtles are found in this particular region. Now coming to the rivers which drain this wildlife sanctuary, the important rivers are Brahmani, Betarni, Dhamra as well as Patasala. Another important feature in this wildlife sanctuary is the Surajpur Creek. And this Surajpur Creek witnesses a unique phenomena which is known as Baga Gahana. Thousands of birds colonize the creek for nesting and the aerial acrobatics performed prior to mating make for an impressive sight. Further, Bhitar Kanika is also home to eight varieties of kingfisher birds and this also is a very rare thing across the world. Now, coming to this particular map again, in the state of Odisha, there are other important wildlife sanctuaries also. For example, Simlipal Tiger Reserve as well as Wildlife Sanctuary, Satkosia Tiger Reserve and Wildlife Sanctuary, and Suna Beda Wildlife Sanctuary. So these wildlife sanctuaries are very important. However, there are other sanctuaries also mentioned. So you can have a look at this particular map and go through the names of other wildlife sanctuaries also. But these, that is Suna Beda, Satkosia, Simlipal, Bhitar Kanika and Gahir Matha are the most important wildlife sanctuaries of Odisha. So now is the time for the question of the day. The question asked in yesterday's DNS was in relation to the monetary policy framework in India. There were two statements given. Statement one was, it has been given statutory backing under RBI Act 1934. The statement 2 was, it calls upon the government to fix the inflation target in consultation with the RBI every 5 years. Among these two statements, you have to find the correct statements. Both the statements are correct and that is why option C, both 1 and 2 is the correct answer. The question from today's DNS is, which of the following organization publishes Gender Inequality Index? Option A, WEF. Option B, UNDP. Option C, Global Women Forum or Option D, South Asian Center for Gender Studies.
So that's all for today. All the very best and study hard.